Welcome to the House of the Redeemer and our magnificent library. My name is Judy Counts. I'm the Executive Director, and I have the pleasure of managing the House for the Board of Trustees. For over a decade, we have hosted the Manis School of Music, but this year we were unable to do so, clearly because of the virus. However, we are very glad to welcome you virtually. I'd just like to share with you a little information about the house. The original owners were Edith Shepherd Fabry and her husband, Ernesto. Edith was a great granddaughter of Cornelius Vanderbilt, and her husband, Ernesto, was an Italian count. They finished the house in 1916 and lived here for many years. In 1949, Edith was inspired by a sermon that she heard preached to leave the house as a retreat house for all faiths. And in 1950, an order of nuns came into residence. When the nuns retired in 1980, the management of the house passed back to the board of trustees. And we continued the mission of being a retreat house in the midst of the city. This library has a very distinct history. It was actually dismantled from a 16th century castle on the outskirts of Urbino and shipped to New York on two boats during the First World War. They sent it on two boats so that if one was torpedoed, they'd have the other half to replicate. Fortunately, both boats made it to New York and then they had an Italian craftsperson come over and retrofit it to their home. This room has been a place of the most wonderful music over the years. We hope that when you can, and that when we can gather again, that you will come to visit. In the meantime, we invite you to visit our website at houseoftheredeemer.org to learn more about what we do and about our history. Thank you so much. On behalf of Mena Sounds Festival team and Mena School of Music at the New Schools College of Performing Arts, I would like to welcome you all to this special event in partnership with the House of the Redeemer, European Women Composers Through the Centuries. Heartfelt thanks to Executive Director Judy Counts and Mrs. Margaret German, Vice President of the Board and Chair of the Music Committee, for a long-standing and most gratifying collaboration. Last but not least, I would like to extend our gratitude to the patrons of Manus and the Festival for their generous and enthusiastic support. Tonight's concert celebrates the talent and the achievement of European women composers who over the last four centuries have had the courage to pursue their passion in a world strongly prejudiced against them. While the late 20th century and the 21st century have witnessed a major worldwide change toward women in the arts, this change has come slowly. It has been a part of women's ongoing struggle for equality. The reign of Louis XIV, a great patron of the arts, was, though brief, a remarkable time for its attitude toward women. Women composers were respected and supported by the state. Girls were considered worthy of excellent education, and laws afforded women considerable independence. However, the succeeding late 18th century and the Romantic era were again difficult, challenging times for creative women Though some, refusing to be intimidated, dared to insist on being heard. Women were allowed to perform, but not to create. Though women writers could publish under male pseudonym, women composers could not perform their work. Composing was considered inappropriate for their sex. With the rise of conservatories in the 19th century, the number of women training for professional careers increased significantly, 
And by the end of the century, with women enrolled in theory and composition, more dared to enter a field in which they knew their work would not receive the recognition afforded that their male colleagues. And now, 100 years later, the musical landscape continues to change and we are witnessing an impressive increase in the number of great women composers whose works are being performed and receiving the acclaim they richly deserve worldwide. Our event will give you a glimpse into the life and music of some of these remarkable European women composers. We hope you will enjoy this performance and we're looking forward to seeing you next year at the beautiful library at the House of the Redeemer. We are opening our program with a sonata for flute and piano by Italian composer Anna Bonn. She was born in 1738 into a family of professional musicians. She began her music studies at the age of four. At the age of 16, she was appointed chamber music virtuosa at the court of Frederick, Margrave of Brandenburg, Bayreuth, to whom she dedicated her six flute sonatas, Opus I.
Juan Martinez, born in 1744, achieved great fame as composer, singer, and keyboard player. She studied with young Josef Haydn, and the poet Metastasio was both her mentor and teacher. She wrote a large number of works, oratorios, motets, symphonies, keyboard concertos, and solo pieces. In 1773, the prestigious Academia Philharmonica in Bologna voted unanimously to grant the composer the title Academia Philharmonica Honorata. No woman had been elected to the Academia in any capacity during its 108 years in existence. You'll hear her sonata for piano in E major. Thank you. 
Katharina Josefa Pratten, a German guitar virtuoso, composer and teacher was born in 1824 in Mülheim. She was the daughter of a prominent guitarist and teacher, Ferdinand Pelzer. The family moved to England in 1829, where he established himself as a sought after teacher and co-editor of an early guitar journal. Katharina Josefa began writing music and performing with great success since she was young. She followed in the footsteps of her father and became highly regarded as a teacher as well. We will hear her impromptu forgotten for guitar. Finnish composer Kaya Sariaho is one of the most prominent contemporary composers. In a 2019 composer's poll by BBC Music magazine, Sariaho was ranked the greatest living composer. Born in Helsinki in 1952, Kaya studied at the Sibelius Academy in Finland and at the Hochschule für Musik in Freiburg. She currently lives in Paris and her works are performed all over the world. In 2016, the Metropolitan Opera produced her opera, L'Amour de Loin. She and her husband, composer Jean-Baptiste Barriere, have been composers in residence at Mans. You'll hear her composition, Chanting Lights for Soprano and Flute.
Fanny Mendelssohn, the beloved sister of Felix Mendelssohn, was born in 1805. During her short life of 42 years, she composed more than 460 pieces of music, including over 125 pieces for piano, 250 songs, four cantatas, orchestral overture, piano trio, piano quartet, most of which were unpublished during her lifetime. While her father, Abraham, enjoyed, encouraged, and appreciated her musical talents, he objected to his daughters performing in public or assuming any kind of professional identity. He said to her, music will perhaps become the profession for Felix, whilst for you it can and must only be an ornament, never the root of your being and doing. A view of proper femininity shared by society as well. Class also played its part since it was not for lady of wealth to earn money. Nevertheless, Fanny never stopped composing and playing, gaining within elite circles as much recognition as her brother Felix. A number of her works were published under her brother's name in his Opus 8 and 9. She persevered and finally, in 1846, she published a collection of songs as her Opus 1. She died of a stroke one year later at the age of 42. You'll hear two pieces from her piano cycle, The Ear.
the English composer and member of the suffrage movement, Dame Ethel Smith, was born in 1858. Her father fiercely opposed her wish to pursue music as a profession. She was determined to do so and went to study composition in Leipzig, where she met Dvorak, Grieg, and Tchaikovsky. Her teacher, Heinrich von Herzogenberg, introduced her to Clara Schumann and Brahms. Ethel Smith became a prolific composer whose works include orchestral, choral compositions, piano pieces, chamber music, and operas. Her opera, The Records, is considered by some critics as the most important English opera during the period between Purcell and Benjamin Britten. Another of her operas, Der Wald, written in 1903, was produced by the Metropolitan Opera. For more than a century, it was the only opera by a female composer produced by the Met until Kaya Sariakos' opera L'Amour de Luan was presented in 2016. Ethel Smith was the first woman composer to be honored with damehood. You'll hear her song, The Clown. There was once a poor clown all dressed in white and chained to the dungeon bars and he danced all day and he danced all night to the sound of the dancing stars Oh clown, city clown you know you can never be free You are tied by the leg to the strings of chants Yet you dance like a captive flea My chain is heavy, my cell is dark I know I can never be free for me.
Amparo Fabra Crespo, born in 1972 in Spain, studied piano, musicology, and composition in Valencia. In 2005, she moved to the United States, where she met composer and conductor Tanya Leon, who became her teacher and mentor. Amparo holds a Master in Music Composition degree from the Brooklyn College Conservatory and a PhD in Music Composition from the Graduate Center at the City University in New York. Amparo was the composer in residence for the Brooklyn College Orchestra and the Brass Ensemble. She received the Morton Feldman Award in Composition in recognition of her work with those two ensembles. Amparo is an active performer, composer, and scholar. She is an associate professor at the New Jersey University and in 2019 was appointed chair of the Department of Music, Dance, and Theater. She has written solo instrumental works, song cycles, orchestral, and choral compositions. You'll hear her work for guitar, Kaleidoscope One. Composer Lily Boulanger, born in 1893, was the first female composer to win the Prix de Rome for her cantata Faust et Hélène. A child prodigy, her remarkable talent was noticed by the great composer Gabrielle Fauré when she was only two years old. At the age of five, she started studying music, learned to play piano, harp, organ, violin, cello, and to sing beautifully as well. Lily was only 24 years old when she died, but she left remarkable compositions for solo piano, chamber music, songs, choral, and symphonic works. Her older sister, Nadia Boulanger, was a noted composer, conductor, and composition teacher. You will hear Lily Boulanger's song, Au Pied de Mon Lit. Oh, 
Clara Schumann, born Wieck in 1819, became one of the most prominent pianists of the 19th century. The story of her life with Robert Schumann, whom she married against the opposition of her father, Frederick Wieck, has been described as the greatest musical love story of the 19th century. She was the most important inspiration to him as a composer, and she deeply influenced the artistic development and creativity of Johannes Brahms as well. Clara started composing as a young girl. She wrote solo piano pieces, a piano concerto, chamber music, songs, and choral music. A mother of eight children, a very active concert pianist and teacher, a caretaker for her husband in declining health, she became the main breadwinner of the family, unable to devote the time for composition she would have liked. Robert Schumann said, Clara has composed a series of small pieces which show a musical and tender ingenuity such as she has never attained before. But to have children and a husband who is always living in the realm of imagination does not go together with composing. She cannot work at it regularly and I'm often disturbed to think how many profound ideas are lost because she cannot work them out. You'll hear her three romances for violin and piano composed in 1853 and dedicated to Josef Joachim, a great violinist and close friend of the Schumanns. Thank you. 